We are the song, we are the music within you, we are the ones, we are the ones who will stay true, we are the music that weaves into your heart, we will be there when your rhythm falls apart. Hello and welcome to Bournemouth. I'm Ellie Crissell and we're here for the Young Citizen Awards 2012 being presented as part of Rotary's annual conference. It's the sixth year of the awards, celebrating the achievements of a very special group of young people who've all done something extraordinary. Whether it's excelling in the face of adversity or going out of their way to help others. Rotary clubs across Britain and Ireland have nominated young people. The eventual winners are here in Bournemouth. And over the next half an hour, you're going to hear some truly inspirational stories. Our first award then goes to a group of students at a school in West Lothian who are determined to raise awareness about hidden child poverty here in the UK. After being shocked at statistics that one in three children are living in poverty and that even included pupils at their own school. They were nominated by the Rotary Club of Whitburn. We became homeless due to unfortunate personal circumstances and becoming homeless has been a big shock to us. So I think that you should all be aware of it. You can have everything one minute and nothing the next. 13-year-old Timmy Simpson tells his school assembly about his personal plight. It's a subject that's been difficult for him to talk about. His story has been featured in a short documentary film made in conjunction with UNICEF by 11 students at St Kentigern's Academy in West Lothian, who call themselves the Seen and Heard Group. This is a film about the reality faced by many of us in the UK. By most estimates, there are now 4 million children living in poverty in the UK. That's one in three. Their aim is to highlight the plight of children who, like Timmy, are living in hidden poverty close to home. When we saw Timmy talking about how his life and the unfortunate circumstances and um, how his everyday life is, they really took back and everybody's like, oh, I never realised. Some of us need help, but you don't realise you can't hear it, you don't see it. 15-year-old Kirsten MacDonald wrote and recorded the track especially for the film. You need to hear our voice. The message of the song is that there are people who need to be heard who aren't being heard. And that is the same as the film because the film is telling us that there are people in poverty who people don't realise are in poverty. Well, congratulations to the Seen and Heard group. Ten of them are here on stage, sitting in the back there. They've travelled down from Scotland. But let's just speak to three of them for the moment. Daniel Reed, Timmy Simpson and Kirsten MacDonald, who you saw in that report. Daniel, let's start with you. Now, we tend, when we think about child poverty, we tend to think about children in Africa. How surprised were you to discover that so many children in the UK are living in poverty, including pupils at your own school? Yeah, as you say, you normally associate poverty with underdeveloped countries such as like Sub-Saharan Africa. So we found out that poverty was all around us in our community and in our school. It really shocked us and inspired us to make the film. I'm sure it did. And what about the title of the film? That, that says a lot, doesn't it? How did you come up with that? Um, well, we just had our weekly meeting in the school and I just came up with the idea from the old saying that children should be seen and not heard. So we thought we'd put like a... Good 20, twist. 21st century spin eye. Now, Timmy, we saw you, you in the film and think things have been quite tough for you, haven't they? Just yeah. tell us a little bit about your experiences and what this film has done for you. It's difficult because you don't have the essential things like heat and warmth and food. Which so many of us just take for granted completely. So. Yeah, so I'm glad the scene in her groups helped me a lot overcome that obstacle. OK, and Kirsten, finally, beautiful voice. How did you come up with the, the song that you wrote and sang? Everything that we discussed while we were making the film, I made notes and then put it together as lyrics. And then sat down at the piano and made a tune. And the tune just sort of wrote itself? Yeah. Well, it's beautiful. Congratulations to all three of you. Daniel Reed, Timmy Simpson and Kirsten MacDonald. Thank you. <laughs> Our next award 
is a joint award that goes to two remarkable teenagers, Alice Pine from Cumbria and Hannah Jones from Chester. They were nominated by the Rotary Club of Babacum and St Mary Church and the Rotary Club of Torquay, respectively, because of their joint link to the Torbay Holiday Helpers Network in Devon that provides free holidays to families with seriously ill children. Here's more about them. Sixteen-year-old Alice Pine is on her latest mission. The terminally ill teenager has been battling cancer for the past four years. Hi Alice, how are you? Hi. She has a bucket list of wishes and dreams she still wants to achieve in her life and today she's fulfilling one of them. Alice, who suffers from Hodgkin's lymphoma, cancer of the white blood cells, has just set up her own charity called Alice's Escapes to provide free holidays in the Lake District where she lives for families of seriously ill children. She found out she was terminally ill last summer and I think it was that that kicked you, wasn't it? Because you realised that you either had to do it or yeah. it wouldn't happen. And this is, this is typical of what our families could come and stay in. Um, and just just give them a week, a week away from it all. A break. <laughs> you need a break. It's very, it's important and it's important to spend time with your family as well. The idea for Alice's escapes came after Alice and her family spent a week being looked after by Luke Tillen, founder of the Torbay Holiday Helpers Network, based in Devon. Alice has done some fundraising for us as a charity. She designed an Emma Bridgewater mug. Uh, which we got all the profits from, which generated £13,000 for the charity, which is absolutely colossal for a very small charity like us. 19-year-old Hannah Jones, who had a cancerous brain tumour, and her family from Chester were the first to receive a free holiday from the Torbay Holiday Helpers Network. Hannah was diagnosed with a brain tumour at the age of 15. The cancer came back after my second operation which meant I needed to have a third operation and that led to me having a stroke. It was either have the stroke or die of cancer. You know, some people say, oh, why me, why me? I did, why not me? It's, it's got, got to happen to someone and I'd rather it happen to me than any of my family members because, I don't know, I'm up for the fight. If, if the cancer's up for a fight, then I'm going to fight it back. <laughs> I fundraise for brain tumour research. Would you like to see my scar? I'd love to see your scar. Hannah is passionate about her campaign to raise awareness about brain tumours, especially in children. She's launched her own charity, selling Hannah's hoodies, and was chosen as the charity of the year by her local supermarket in Chester. Unfortunately, Alice Pine is not able to be with us this morning, but here to accept the awards on both of their behalves is Hannah Jones. Congratulations to you. Oh, you How do you well. feel? Oh. Round of applause there. How do, you, how do you feel being sat here today? It feels amazing, to be honest, and to be able to spread the word about brain tumour awareness and how, like, underfunded it is. I was going about... to say, what, yes, you're specifically talking about brain tumour awareness in young people. Why is it, I mean, clearly it's a very important cause to you. Well, it's, it's, it's underfunded, and yet it's the biggest cancer killer amongst children. You'd think people would put a, a lot more money into it. And you've raised £160,000 so far, haven't you? That's incredible. What, wait, we've got another, another round of applause from the audience. What motivates you to keep going? I think what motivates me is that just because it's so, so underfunded, I don't want people to have to go through it. Well, this, and I've lost a few friends along the way from brain tumours. And it's, it's a horrible disease, to be honest. Of course. How did you come up with the idea of Hannah's hoodies? I think hoodies are seen as a bad thing. <laughs> and yet I want them to be seen as a more positive thing and still raise money for brain tumour research funding. It's a great twist, isn't it? And they've been popular. Yeah, even my nan's got one. Even your nan's <laughs> got one. There you go. Your nan's a hoodie. OK. <laughs> Hannah Jones, congratulations again and thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Our next award goes to Yorkshire schoolgirl Bethany Hare, who's come up with a novel way of fundraising for her local children's hospice and has just set up her own charity. Bethany was nominated by the Rotary Club of Leeds, and here's her story. Hi. 
12-year-old Bethany Hare is putting on her makeup and getting all dressed up for her favourite role as Charlie Chaplin. It all started when she was just 10. She used all her savings to make a charity video filmed at Abbey House Museum in Kirkstall, Leeds, to raise a smile and also thousands of pounds for her local children's hospice. I'm dressed up as Charlie Chaplin and it's because I want to raise money for Martin House Children's Hospice because that's my local hospice and other hospices around the UK. She put the film on Just Give In and donations came in from all over the, the world. She'd made a target of five and a half thousand which covers the cost of Martin House for one morning. Um, and when all the donations came in, I think she went up to 8,400. And she's now launched her own charity, Bethany's Smile, and she's received some high profile backing. I got Matthew Lewis, who plays Neville Longbottom in Harry Potter, to become my patron for my charity. After making her charity video, Bethany held her first Walk of Smiles dressed as Charlie Chaplin in Horsforth, Leeds last September. It went really, really well. <laughs> Bethany now plans to hold her Walks of Smiles in York, Harrogate, and again in Leeds and other cities. For a 12-year-old to be taking all this responsibility on and raising so much money for Martin's house is a wonderful thing, it's great and it just shows other children that they can go out there and, and do something for someone but you don't have to be an adult to get on with it. Hello everyone and thank you for coming to the Walk of Smiles. Her aim is to raise money for children's hospices all over the country, to help children with serious illnesses and to encourage other youngsters to fundraise through her Smilers clubs. Well, congratulations, Bethany. I can see how your smile would raise a lot of money. How do you feel standing here with this award? I'm really honoured, and the people that are also receiving the award, they're amazing. So to say that I've got this award, I'm really honoured. I bet you are. Well, you've done fantastically well, and you deserve it. How did you come up with the idea, though, of Charlie Chaplin? It's quite an unusual one, isn't it? Well, I was learning the song Smile, and I realised that Charlie Chaplin composed the song Smile. Um, and we went to Cumbria and me and my dad were storyboarding because I asked him if we could make a film and I said why don't I sing Smile along to it and I thought oh, Charlie Chaplin composed it, why don't I dress up as him? Yeah, well you've got the movements down haven't you? How did you, how did you get it so accurate? I was on YouTube for two days and looking at his movements. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks great. And you've also received the backing of the Chaplin family, haven't you? Tell us about that. Yeah, Josephine Chaplin said I can dress up as Charlie Chaplin for the walks and use his silhouette for my logo. And she said she's really, really proud of me of what I've done. Well, isn't that fantastic? You've just set up your own charity, Bethany Smiles. What's that going to be doing? Well, it's caring for people with life-limiting and life-threatening illnesses, like doing the housework and ironing and washing so they can spend time with the children. And you've got a famous patron involved, haven't you? Who's that? Um, Matthew Lewis. <laughs> who plays Neville Longbottom in Harry Potter, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. How chuffed were you to get him on board? I was really happy because when I found out about it, because I watch Harry Potter, and when I found out he was doing it, I was really happy. And you had another celebrity supporter, didn't you, who spoke to your <laughs> mum. Tell us about that. Um, yeah, Jimmy Savile, because the Savile family are giving me all the walks and events that are in his name. I get 50%. Wow. And there's a book that's going out, and I get 50p for every book, and the Little Sisters of the Poor Isn't that get brilliant? 50p. So they think you're doing wonderful work. We think you're doing wonderful work. Congratulations, Bethany. Well done. Our next award goes to teenager Rabia Ahmed from Preston, who's determined to break down barriers in sport as well as improve social cohesion in her local community. Rabia was nominated by the Rotary Club of Preston Amandaness, and here's more about her. Right, you can start passing now. Football is a passion for 19-year-old Rabia Ahmed and she's determined to spread her enthusiasm for the sport. She's gained qualifications to be a football coach and is training teams of Asian girls as young as seven to play football. When you play a football match, you've got five players. When I grew up, I saw the Asian community lacked a lot of things. So then me, myself, like being brought up in that environment, I was like, no, I'm not going to carry on like everyone else is doing. I want to break some barriers. And through that, that's why I started Asian Girls Football. 
It's been very difficult as you've got to ask permission for a lot of these girls' parents beforehand and it'll take a couple of weeks as well to get um, like permission for them to come out and play. And like right now you don't see anybody around because you've had to book a separate school pitch. It's not as if you can play in the park. Rabia began volunteering at Fishwick Rangers Youth and Community Development Scheme based in Preston when she was 16. Now when she turned 16, she had that enthusiasm to become a volunteer. And she saw the massive keenness of going in and saying, look, I want to go and do something special for the community. And she wanted to target using football as a vehicle for the Asian girls. And I thought to myself, that's something unique in itself. Because Asian girls have never, ever, and because of the social inclusion elements as well, really struggled to break down the football barriers. She's gone on to get qualifications in sport leadership. Right, knees up higher, come on. Rabia has higher. become a role model for those she's training. She's a real inspiration. Yeah, like you want to be like her because she's achieved so much and she's only like really young. In Asians, they think of girls playing football as not a very good thing. But now because of what Rabi has done, and it's like changed their thoughts as well that girls can play football and it's not just the boys playing. So yeah, it has broken down very few barriers. Wonderful stuff. Congratulations, Rabia Ahmed. How do you feel here today? It's an amazing feeling to be here and I just want to thank Rotary Club of Preston for nominating me and Fisher Rangers for giving me the opportunity to, do, to play football. Now, you've been breaking down some barriers in your local community. How's that going? Um, well, it's going pretty well because like, the Asian community was pretty much socially excluded and then after that we made structured environments and structured um, indoor activities where the women could come and play. And why football for you? I've just had a great interest in football and I've got an interest in other sports but I think football has just been a hobby from the start. And you've also started a health and fitness scheme for local Asian women, is that right? Yeah, like they go to the gym weekly now because there's been, they've just wanted, wanted to go to a gym and feel comfortable in a female only environment. Yeah, that's fantastic. What do you hope to do in the future? How, how well are your football teams doing? Well, we, um, we like to create up like uh, tournaments and create academies like throughout Preston and then just play. Great. Sky's the limit. Rabia Ahmed, congratulations. Thank you very much. Well, as we all know, 2012 is going to be a bit of a big year with the Olympic and Paralympic Games being held here. And our next Young Citizen Award winner, Cameron Foster from Wigan, has, among other things, been chosen to carry the Olympic torch. He was nominated by the Rotary Club of Astley. And here's more about him. Sixteen-year-old Cameron Foster is back at his old school, Wesley High School in Lee, to talk to pupils there about his forthcoming role as an Olympic torchbearer and the 2012 Games. Part of the Olympics, my, my job is to be a torchbearer. Seven years ago, at the age of nine, Cameron suffered an horrific skiing accident in Italy, falling 40 feet from a ski lift, breaking both legs, his arm and dislocating both ankles. It was an incident that was to change his life. I had to spend six to eight weeks in a wheelchair, so I sort of realised how unfortunate other people were who were in worse off situations, who were permanently disabled or who had accidents or injuries that they couldn't recover from. In October, Cameron was the youngest volunteer to go to Kenya with the Cricket Without Boundaries charity. Our aim over there was to um, make the HIV AIDS awareness messages more um, more direct to the kids. Do you know the ABC? Yes. A? Abstinence. B? Be C? Be Brilliant. And who do we have on our t shirt? Yeah. Cricket without boundaries, yeah. And we use cricket as a tool, as a, as a guide to sort of get their messages across. Since the trip to Kenya, Cameron has become the first young ambassador for the Lancashire County Cricket Club Foundation. When we heard about Cameron's uh, role in volunteering for Cricket Without Boundaries, um, we researched him and found out the good work he'd done um, for raising money for young disabled people and um, the work he was doing himself in giving his time to coach younger people. And we thought he was a really good role model. 
Well, congratulations, Cameron Foster. How do you feel? Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, when I found out I was going to be coming down here to Bournemouth and receiving this award, it was such an outstanding phone call and couldn't wait to come and meet the other inspiring people who had got the awards as well. Now, tell us about that trip to Kenya. It looks absolutely brilliant. Yeah, what was, was that like? It was unbelievable. It was November last year, and I went out on a two-week project with a charity called Cricket Without Boundaries. And out there, we were using cr cricket as a vehicle to sort of input HIV and AIDS awareness messages. So I spent two weeks in Kenya coaching cricket and it was just an unbelievable and eye-opening experience really. And it was something that's definitely changed my life. Tell us about your Olympic torch stuff. <laughs> well, I got selected as one of 10 national ambassadors to get young people around the community in the country nominated to carry the Olympic torch. And after that role, I was then selected to carry the Olympic torch myself. How did you feel? How did which you was feel? truly Amazing. unbelievable to Amazing. be a part of, sort of the Olympic legacy this yeah. year. Can't wait to be carrying these torch through, through Hindley and my local town as well. That'll be wonderful. Very well deserved. Cameron Foster, congratulations. Thanks. Our last award goes to former Royal Marine Ben McBean, who was wounded serving in Afghanistan. He was nominated by the Rotary Club of Plymouth Mayflower, and here's his story. Former Royal Marine Ben McBean was severely injured serving in Afghanistan. But he's determined to prove he's still up for the challenge, taking part in a sponsored mile run for sports relief on Plymouth Hoe. Ben was five months into his first tour of duty when he was injured after stepping on a Taliban landmine in 2008, losing his left arm and right leg, as well as receiving burns and shrapnel wounds. Just running towards a, a doorway, and then just boom, and I literally, I was just upside down. And I must be about at least 15, 20 foot in the air, and then just landed, and that's when my leg was missing, just massive bone sticking out. And then my arm was like wrapped around my back, like right, my hand was in my neck somehow and then just loads of blood and things everywhere and just crawling around for ages and getting out of breath really easy and just basically dying, I suppose, and just had to just try and stay alive. And but I was like 20 years old on my own, limbs missing, just bleeding to death. So I managed to stay alive enough, long enough for Alas to rescue me, basically. Ben was described by Prince Harry as a real hero when he returned from Afghanistan. You know, two injured guys who came back on the plane with us who were uh, essentially comatose throughout the whole way, um, one who'd lost um, two limbs, a left arm and a right leg. And, you know, those are the heroes. Those are guys who have been blown up by a mine. Ben was determined to fight back, taking part in an expedition to Everest Base Camp in the Himalayas and completing the London Marathon twice in 12 months, the first being within a year of sustaining his injuries. I'm always trying to help out. You know, I do things for Out for Heroes, um, British Legion, Blesma. I mean, if I can raise let's say a thousand pounds for running a mile and, here comes and that's going to maybe get someone a wheelchair or a wet room because they need it now then it's well worth doing it it's had a lot of help personally off charities and whoever else and doctors and stuff and if i can do something back to say thanks and that's what i'll do well congratulations ben what an amazing story how do you feel to be standing here today with this award uh it feels great to be honest with you um can i just say as well before um i'd like to dedicate this uh, on behalf of everyone who's ever, you know, done anything good to help out someone else, because um, there's millions of people out there who are doing great things for charity, including my, you know, not just myself, but everyone who's sat here and everyone in the audience, and not everyone gets recognition. So I'd like to accept this on behalf of everyone who's ever done anything good. So cheers. Right, here we go. Round of applause from the audience there. Now tell us a little bit more about what happened to you in Afghanistan. Um, I was on patrol in Afghanistan with the Marines in 2008 and I stood in a, a landmine which tore my right leg off and my left arm was pretty much hanging by a thread so I spent the next 10-15 minutes just crawling around on my own just trying to stay alive which is why I'm supporting the Jaipur project because it helps kids in India and Africa who've, who lost limbs because I know how much it is to walk again. What happened to me happened like four years ago now and I'm just trying to live my life, I suppose, and if it can help others to live theirs and try and change for the better, then you know, I'm more than happy to help. Now, just quickly, tell us about um, Prince Harry and the beers. Yeah, I, I met <laughs> well, Prince Harry, me and him, we were about to go on the plane together, but at the time, as you can imagine, I wasn't in a fit state to really have a conversation, but <laughs> <laughs> I met him a little while later when I, could, when I took my first steps, and uh, he bet me a crate of Stella, I think it was, to climb a 30-foot wall. <laughs> 
Hands. So, as you do. Um, <laughs> I climbed this wall and I, I got to the top, luckily, and I, he sent me a crate of beer. He made good nice on his note. promise. Yeah, yeah. Good for him. There you go. Well, Ben McBean, lovely to meet oh, you thank again. You very much. Congratulations. Cheers. Well, we have with us now Ray Berman, who's president of Rotary International in Great Britain and Ireland. Ray, what's been your reaction to seeing all of those fantastic young people doing inspirational things? Well, Ellie, they've been, they've been inspiration to us, actually, as Rotarians. You know, Rotarians love nothing better than working with young people and supporting our young people, whether it's eliminating polio from the world, as we are, or whether it's the local Rotary Clubs working with local young people in our many, many projects that we do. And they're a great inspiration to us all. Well, that's it from me in Bournemouth and the Young Citizen Awards 2012. I'm sure you'll agree we've heard some amazing stories and met some truly inspirational young people. Also taking place here in Bournemouth have been the Rotary Young Musician Awards. And we leave you now with some music from the winners. Thank you for joining us.